Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization, and today's BS topic is food pairing. What, uh, you want us to eat all the foods by themselves now, Mike? What is this? Actually, the opposite. So, food pairing is very common in religious circles. For example, if you are Muslim and you eat according to the rules that determine what is uh, haram and halal, then halal is has some rule, things about what you can eat together and what you can't and some things you can't eat at all. Almost identical, just kidding, very, very frighteningly similar rules to the Jewish religion. Um, kosher food has all kinds of stuff you're not supposed to pair. Oh, one food with the other. Milks and meats aren't supposed to pair, not supposed to have in the same time. Uh, when the Christians do Lent, there are some food pairings that are not allowed, and you're actually supposed to take a food group and take it away altogether and stuff like that. So it's it's very common in religious circles, but it actually has uh, been seen in nutrition circles. For example, and this is the top, this is not a religious video. <laughs> I just want to point out that food pairing is a thing that exists in another realm that has nothing to do with nutrition, really, if you think about it. Here are some things that are actually advocated by people in the nutrition community, not to say qualified nutritionists, actually to say the very opposite, unqualified nutritionists or people that aren't nutritionists really, it's just people that say things, will say things like, you know, proteins and carbs digest better by themselves than if you pair them. And I actually have, I was at a, a, a hangout, a picnic that my parents had with their friends and their older folks, and they were in their 60s at the time. And I had a lady sit me down and be like, you know things. Yes, you're sort of an expert. I was like, yeah, why not? And she's like, I'm doing this great diet. And now that I know nutrition too, you and I can talk and like we know things. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. What's the diet like? She's like, well, I know, I know now that the enzymatic environment in the stomach and the intestines is so different between digesting proteins and carbs that I have all of my carbs separately in meals and all of my proteins separately. So she'll have like some whole grain bread and some fruit in one meal, not what I would call a meal. That's like, where's the meat at? And then she would have like, you know, a slice of fish or something like that in another meal. And then the next meal would be again, some carbs and the next meal again, some protein. So she was doing that fun conversation because she was like, this is good. Yes. And I was like, Actually, you would be surprised that this is all nonsense. I think I said it slightly more politely, but not by much. I've heard people say, don't eat fruits and vegetables in the same meal because there's some kind of interference effect. And something I used to do and fall for is don't eat both high carb and high fat in the same meal. Because you see the carbs, they raise the insulins and the insulins, they're very bad. And they make you fat, fat, but not if you don't eat fat. But if you eat fat with the high carbs, the insulin from the high carbs takes the fat and smashes it into your fat cells and you become fat forever and people make fun of you. And then you have nobody to talk to, but you can eat ice cream. And so it's a self-fulfilling prophecy until you die of obesity, 700 pounds, precisely three days after you start. So don't do it. And I used to avoid this as well. Now, here's the deal. All those three things I just said, it's all total bullshit. The religious stuff, respect. You do, you do your thing. Religious freedom is an amazing thing. But if it's not religious, you're going to have to justify it. Because religion justifies things on faith. Dope. End of discussion. Total respect. Nutrition, uh, people will ask you, is this a religious thing? And they go, no, no, no. no this is something that like uh, we figured out works. Like, oh, okay. Why? And uh, what follows is usually a descent into madness because there is no why. Let me prove my point. Proteins and carbs digest better by themselves than together. Almost everyone who tries to do this kind of diet is trying to lose weight. If you are able to digest your food better, you actually take more of the food, pass it through your GI tract, more of it gets to your body cells, including the fat cells. If you had a condition whereby you were unable to digest food very well or at all, untreated celiac disease, if you have lots of gluten, is that thing. I don't know if you guys know anyone with untreated celiac disease, but they usually weigh like 100 pounds because all the food that goes in, it goes right back out. It goes mostly undigested. That is a recipe for extreme weight loss and inability to gain weight. So if you claim that a diet enhances the digestion of the foods that you're eating, maybe you're interested in gaining weight. Cool. I know bodybuilders that are very concerned when they're putting on a ton of bulk. They're like, I have to make sure my digestion is good, which is like, yeah, it's a legitimate point because if you're pooping out all the food you're eating, good God, you'll never gain weight. 
these people though, that do these diets, they want to lose weight and they're like, my digestion's better. It's like that may be the opposite of what you want. It's not to say that you want bad digestion, but if oops, by accident, you poop out half the food you eat, your life just became a lot easier. You're trying to make things harder. Good news for you. It doesn't work by themselves and together. Almost all the nutrients you can eat as a human get digested almost completely either way, 97% efficiency. But for a couple of weird situations where you're allergic to something or something doesn't fit or you just eat way too much of it and then your digestion is like, fuck that, I'm passing it all the way through. But for rare circumstances, carbs alone, carbs plus protein, carbs, protein, fat, you're just going to digest and absorb all that anyway. And there is no upside. But there's a huge downside. And the downside is you're wasting your time destroying your quality of life by disassembling your meals needlessly into different sub fractions. Like you go to a restaurant with friends and you're like, Ooh, I love this chicken risotto. I'm going to have to get the chicken separately. And then the risotto separately, the waiter's like, yeah, okay. All right. That sucks. I guess you're like, yep, that trying to get lean. So, you know, proteins and carbs, they don't, they don't, you know, and the waiter's like, yeah, 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 they sure don't. Give me 10 minutes and I'll give you your pathetic plate of everything separate so you can save something for later. What kind of nonsense is that? Don't eat fruits and veggies in the same meal. Why? Why? Or to quote Christian Bale, why not? Ugh, there's no, there is no good theoretical reason and absolutely no empirically validated reason. And there's no practical reason. It's just make-believe. Like, and the bird of proof is on those people that say that to give us a substantial amount of either logic or evidence or at least some like, hey, some fucking, let's get some before and afters going. And then if you get those going, the first critique is like, well, didn't you just eat healthier altogether? They're like, well, yeah. They're like, how do you know that did, isn't what did it? Like, well, it's the fruits and veggies not together. It's the acidic and, and the whatever nonsense comes out of that. And what about the high carbs with high fats? Isn't that bad? Well, if you have high carb plus high fat, you just have more calories. So the number one way that works well is if you tell yourself, I'm not going to consume foods that have both high fats and high carbs at the same time, you've eliminated almost every high calorie food. Cookies, gone. Pizza, gone. Ice cream, gone. Cake, gone. Totino's pizza rolls, gone. What? I'm sorry, nobody takes Totino's pizza rolls out of my, you pry them out of my cold, dead hands. But all of a sudden, I can't eat them. So yeah, I don't get as fat. But isn't there something molecularly, chemically, hormonally, a good fix there? No, because you get a lot of insulin secretion quite quickly if you eat exclusively a meal of carbs. Okay. Insulin. Yeah. Lots of it. It will, if there's fat present, will cause that fat to be anabolized to some extent into fat cells. Quirky thing that happens, which has been known in nutritional science for, I don't know, 80 years, is that when you have lots of fat in a meal with carbs, it takes the glycemic index, the rapidity of insulin response, and lowers it all the way down to like what brown rice and apples are. So if you have a simultaneous high carb and high fat meal, the glycemic index is incredibly low, which means insulin slowly leaches out, which means like nothing special happens that's very insulinergic or very fat gain promoting. If there's also protein in that meal, then it's just like a great anabolic feast that makes your body more jacked over the hours that it releases. So the whole idea that this is even possible just forgets the idea that your insulin dynamics change when you introduce fat to make things less insulinergic. So it's a self-fixing problem. It's not a problem. And if you get people to be like, yeah, I'm just trying to avoid high glycemic index foods, man. That's what causes fat gain. Bullshit, by the way. And they're like, yeah, like I can't have like treats and stuff. You're like, I just looked up the GI for ice cream and it's, it's 17. Okay. Pure glucose is a hundred. Brown rice is like 40. So you can definitely have ice cream. And they're like, well, no, cause it had a sugar in it. You're like, Okay, fructose has a GI of like 15 or something by itself. Like, well, yeah, but like, right. They just don't know. They just don't know these things. So then they make them. Let me tell you guys about the RP Hypertrophy app. With over 28 preset programs already in the app, you can choose to make your own, you can modify an existing program, or you can just run the programs exactly as they were written by me personally. This app programs everything for you exercises, weights, sets, reps, frequency, the whole thing. After every single workout on every single week, the app adjusts to your unique parameters with every single input. We have over 250 exercises in the app with detailed video tutorial links to every single one. You never have to be confused about technique or form ever again. I'm guessing right now you're pretty interested in the app? Download the RP Hypertrophy app today. Grouping secular food in arbitrary ways is pointless. And here's the worst part. 
like I sort of said before, it intentionally inconveniences your clients if you're a nutrition coach and you tell them to do that. And if you're doing it yourself, it intentionally inconveniences you, making your diet adherence lower on average. Because if you think splitting up your carbs and proteins is the way to get healthy, that's what you've chosen as your sort of vector for health, as you're salient through the battlefield of health, then once you get really sick of doing that, and it obviously isn't helping you any more than anything else would, you have a pretty high probability of being like, man, you know what, fuck this. I'm going back to normal eating, where you could have just eaten healthy without any arbitrary rules, and then you just have most of the food you like anyway. You control your portions. You have mostly not junk food and some junk every now and again. It's an awesome balanced thing that you can sustain forever. But if you make arbitrary weird rules that destroy your quality of eating, all of your friends go to a restaurant. You can't come. Your family eats food at home. You have to split it up. It's it's nuts, and it's so inconvenient. You're probably going to do it less, and you're probably going to fail. And human beings, if they fail at something enough times, they get kind of dejected. We have probably dozens of millions of Americans, if not hundreds, dozens of millions of people, for sure hundreds of million people across the world that have tried a bunch of these fad, stupid, wacky diets that don't work, inevitably failed with them, and are just checkboxing failure in their brain over and over each time they fail a diet. After a while, your brain learns like, dieting, not for me. I will fail. So I stop trying. And then the obesity epidemic continues. So- Let's make sure to diet rationally, logically. If you guys want to learn how to diet, uh, we have fat loss dieting made simple series. We have a healthy eating made simple series. You just Google them shits right on YouTube. Enjoy watching them. It's like an eight part series. Each video is like eight minutes long and you'll know everything basic and effective there is to know about losing fat, gaining muscle and being healthy. And you can save all this other bullshit and just take the word bullshit and just let the people who say it best say it, which is to say Arnold, which is to say bullshit. Nine. See you later.